Oh, there is a submarine. Approaching target. Hello, B three something something something. Taking fire. Enjoy. This is fine. This is fine, guys. <laughs> this is fine, guys. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Today we're in the tier 6 German U boat, the U 69. And the 12 year old in my head is very happy with the. Uh, boats that Wargaming picked for this test, the American Cachalot, also known as, and the U-69. Anyways, I'm actually here to discuss what the gameplay of these boats is like, and yes, they're boats, not ships. This is due to naval tradition. But this is also where the fun ends, because I think these submarines are quite boring because they're slow, and we can't really expect them to be faster. You see, submarines can dive underwater, they can do all these amazing things, but they have a problem, in that they have one type of weapon, which is the torpedo. These torpedoes are actually quite interesting, they work differently than torpedoes and destroyers, because these are homing torpedoes. Right now I'm going to use them. I started submerging, I pressed the G button, so I went to periscope depth, now I can launch a set of two torpedoes. After I do that, I can send out pings like this. And I need to hit the uh, uh, bow and stern of a ship. And when I hit the uh, bow or stern of a ship with a ping, the torpedoes start uh, homing in on that position. Uh, you can see those torpedoes. They have this red marker that blinks on top of them. And this means that they're homing in on that fuso. And if they hit the right location, they can citadel said battleship, dealing quite a lot of damage. And I find this type of gameplay to be quite interesting. However, the reason they're boring is because the submarines are slow, and the torpedo reload is quite long. So once you launch your torpedoes, there's not much you can do. And the other thing is that the ships you can really hit well are battleships. For example, you can see that one of the torpedoes on the Fusa missed. That's because the um, torpedoes are homing, but they're only homing until they get to a set distance from the ship. That is, if they get too close to the ship, then they stop homing in, and they just go in a straight line from what I can understand, and this is how the Fusa essentially avoided three of those four torpedoes. Which means that I wasn't exactly very effective against her. Even though, you know, we're dealing with a bot that's not exactly some kind of a superb player. The other thing the Fusa could do is, because the Fusa knows where I am, she could actually turn her uh, bow or stern towards me, and then I could only land pings on the front or the rear of the ship. The end result is that the torpedo can't actually citadel them because I can't, can't ping the bow and stern of the ship. And that essentially means that your damage output can be quite limited. The other thing is that uh, there are other submarines, there's a U-69 next to me, but there is no real submarine versus submarine combat because, well, you can technically torpedo another submarine, but you can only do that when they're on the surface. From what I can understand, you can lock on to a submarine and then the torpedoes might dive a little bit. I'm not actually entirely sure how that works, but that's how it felt like to me. But the problem is that this is so unlikely to actually succeed that you really shouldn't consider this to be a thing. I can see the submarine, I can't really do anything about her. And part of the reason why it ends up being so boring is because a lot of matches end up with both sides having submarines left. And then it takes forever to hunt those submarines down. Especially when there are no destroyers around. Now, submarines have a bunch of weaknesses, which is mainly in destroyers and you could see the carrier. The carrier thing is that 
it's due to splash damage, which actually makes battleships also quite dangerous opponents for submarines. So when I shoot out this ping when I'm in periscope depth, and let's say I'm unspotted, what should happen is that, um, or what happens is that on the minimap you see a small circle. By the way, the submarine is trying to torpedo me, but it's not going to do anything because it just doesn't work. Anyway, what happens is that when you shoot out when you shoot out this kind of a ping, a small circle appears for the red team on the minimap that basically says that hey, there's a submarine in this location. Now, this means that technically you can know as a battleship where the submarine is, and the submarine is very slow at periscope depth. You can see 5.9 knots. If you then fire HE onto that spot, there is a very high chance that you will deal a lot of damage to the submarine, because high explosive or any kind of splash damage deals a lot of damage to the submarines. This is why you saw at the start of the video where the Furious essentially one-shot the submarines. Now, Furious didn't always one-shot, but essentially every time you dropped on a submarine like that, you dealt at least 90% of the submarine's HP and damage. Now, AP is really useless against submarines, though, because you actually have to hit the submarine with it. But HE, you just have to get close. And so, submarines, I think, are actually less effective, or will be less effective in real matches once players learn how to play against and with them, than they are in this test. Well, first of all, because I'm playing versus bots, and second of all, even real players don't really know how the system really works. Then you also have the fact that destroyers are incredibly deadly because destroyers basically just have to sail on top of a submarine, then press the G button and they win. The GG button, so to say, because once a DD is on top of a submarine, it's basically over. Well, it should be. Not always, though. Sometimes the submarine can actually be quite deadly to the destroyer, too, but that's kind of rare. All in all, though, I mean, think about the gameplay so far that you've seen. We've had uh, two battleships basically sail next to us without trying to do anything. And we've been busy the entire match so far. And that basically only sailed forward and then chased them and pinged. While the pinging mechanic is very interesting and I really like seeing this. It's not exactly exciting, is it? And if there were other ships around... Well, I probably would be just zoned out of this uh, Bayan. And let's say that we sink this Bayan and there is a fight on the other side of the map. There's no chance I'm going to be participating in that one because my submarine only goes like 22 knots or something top speed. And so I don't really find submarine gameplay exciting. What I do like, however, is uh, anti-submarine warfare. And the CV, you know, that's... Who cares? Nobody really cares about that. But it's really interesting in destroyers because this gives another thing for destroyers to do. Now, submarines can cap, but they can only cap when they're on the surface of the water, which is what I'm doing right now. If you go into periscope depth or, low or deeper underwater, you can't cap, which I think is a good idea. But basically... To me, the most interesting part about submarine gameplay is actually playing against them. Playing as submarines myself just felt boring. And here you can see the type of situation that pretty much every single match ended up as, where one side has two submarines left, we know roughly where they are, and now it'll take like two or three or four or even longer minutes to actually deal with the submarine, even though the game is basically over. Now, another problem I have with the submarines is that they take the places of normal ships or surface ships. And this means that if you're, say, a light cruiser that is about fighting other surface ships, because light cruisers don't get any ASW equipment, which I think they really should, but let's say you are, you have fewer targets, because now suddenly there are nine ships. By the way, if you look at the minimap, or... A moment ago, you could see the U-69 launched uh, ping. There's a... you can see it right now. There's the circle that appears. And that's basically indicating that the U-69 just pinged. She's probably torpedoing the Bayan. Now, I have no real chance of doing much to this U-69. I could 
technically torpedo her, but it's very unlikely that I'll be able to hit her because she can just dive underwater and there's nothing I can do. I can, however, go and try to spot her, but I think due to my slow speed, which is 22.8 knots, the Hatsuharu is gonna get on top of her way before and then she just presses the G button and the U69 of the red team actually goes down. Or alternatively, HE just takes her out. Or I suppose even AP technically could do it. So yeah, I find submarine gameplay to be quite boring and I'm not really sure how Wargaming can fix it. I don't even know if they should fix it because Maybe that's just fine, the way it is, because it's not like submarines feel overpowered so far. They're just okay. And if they're just okay, it means that they don't disrupt the gameplay balance of other ship classes as much. Which means that, um, you know, the other ship classes are gonna be fine. It'll be unlike CVs. The reason CVs feel so annoying is because they disrupt the gameplay of the other classes. Anyway, the U69 went down, so now it's time to deal with the uh, other U69, I suppose, but I would have no chance of ever getting there, so instead, let's enjoy some underwater stuff. Because I think we didn't really see enough of this. I really like this, though. It looks so damn good. Especially when you have ships around you, like a battleship. You can see the... Uh, hull of the ship you can see it in the you can see one in the distance and especially when they fire their guns it's pretty amazing it's not so amazing when there's a red submarine on top of you that is uh, dropping depth charges but or red destroyer on top of you dropping depth charges but you know that's just that's just life so yeah this is the boring ending bit I've been talking about. Half the games ended basically like this. Where just nothing happened. You just sail around and that's kind of it. I think they really need to think of something else for submarines to do. Otherwise, I think people are going to be quite unhappy with them. And demand that they get buffed to levels where um, submarines end up disrupting the gameplay of other ships too much. One thing they could do, for example, is, uh, you see that deck gun? They could make that one actually do something. You know, submarine versus submarine gameplay might actually end up being more interesting in that case. And here's the game over, which I assume means they sank the other submarine. I did 87k damage, sank one of the battleships, kept the base, and I have to say that this is an above average match for me in submarines. You can look at the results of the other submarines and you can see that, you know, it's quite difficult to have great games in this. Like I said, it's an above average match for me. In most of them I did even less than this one. And they ended in pretty much the same way where we just waited for somebody to sink the enemy submarines. Or sometimes it was just submarines versus submarines. It's just kind of boring. I really wanted to share this match to show what they're like. And uh, in the future I'll show some matches from the other perspectives where you're fighting against submarines. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Ryder. And I hope I'll see you guys next time. I think we'll find the enemy submarine. I wonder if he'll run away from the gate then. Bayan. We're under attack. Oh! There's the... There's our uh, little friend. Fighter airborne. Hello, little cushlot. Approaching target. Nice to meet you. I am... Uh, I am the aircraft carrier. Oh god, I missed slightly. <laughs> it's okay though. 